It is uh, 8.37, and I am here, and I think I'm going to be here for some time, at least two or three minutes, if not longer. Oh wow, they're, they're starting to move. Yeah, so I'm here, and I get a, I believe, deliver in that building, because that's where my GPS shows that I'm delivering. Um, and there's a lot of people with coils, and that's what I got. I'm a flatbed with two coils on my truck, so I'm assuming this is the right line. How fortunate for me. I mean, it wasn't that it was bad enough to have to drive through Chicago and take two hours to drive 60 miles. Or was it 55? I don't know. It's uh, It was a bit ridiculous. Let's see. So. It looks like some people are pulling up though. So I'll get to get on the other side of this driveway. And there's that truck. And there's a truck now behind me. And uh, if you go way back there, there's a bunch of trucks. Or some other company. This is the uh, this is the alley of companies that have truck deliveries. I take it, St. Paul Road, or St. Paul Boulevard. Once I get within the first, you know, one or two truck lengths ahead, or once I'm like two, well, we'll see how fast these trucks go in and out. May determine how soon I just walk in and check in and determine what the dealio is. What's this guy doing? Let's see, let's watch what this guy does. Because I was ahead of him. He decided to pull around me. I don't know, maybe he's got a specific appointment time. And, uh, so that truck pulls forward, and now that guy gets out of his truck. So now he's thinking about it. He's like, oh, I'll pull forward. Uh, 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 uh. No, he's not going to pull forward. I'm going to undo some bungees. So he did. He, that trucker, that mother trucker. That's jump in the queue. But you saw what company he drove for, so I don't know what, what his dealio is. Um, I have an open appointment between now and 4 o'clock. I don't know what, what that guy's got going on, so um, I may not. Yeah, that's just puzzling. Usually, uh, uh, when there's a line like this, drivers don't necessarily do that kind of thing, because that's frowned upon. And truck drivers will get out and let other drivers know that they are not happy with what they just did. And, and uh, challenge their decision-making process. So, we'll see what happens. Here, I thought I was going to be able to pull forward, but... Hmm. Yep, the wait begins. So exciting, I know. Okay, it's cold outside. <laughs> it's like uh, 39 degrees. Not too bad. Um, so what I ended up doing is I walked inside, signed in. They take your phone number and then they call you when it is your appointed time to unload. So I'm not sure if I'll necessarily be unloaded prior to any other truck that has arrived here before me, but crazier things have happened. That's it for now. Once I get unloaded, I'll uh, get a new load. I can only hope and pray that the new load is somewhere north, northwest, west, southwest of here. Because I really don't want to have to drive through Chicago again to go pick up another load. Because that'll make a really short mileage day. <laughs> a lot of hours and very little miles. So I can keep my fingers crossed. 
see if this will focus correctly. Can you see that? There we go. Four hours and five minutes I've been sitting here. <laughs> I moved a little bit. Uh, they called me, told me to come into this door, number two. And then some other random truck driver just decided, hey, I'm going to pull in and and he's in there now. <laughs> so I went and told him. They're like, what? We'll call you again. Just wait right there. <sighs> and there's a line of like, I don't know, 20 trucks out there. So I don't know where this guy came from other than to be like, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to do whatever I want. There's an open door. I'm pulling in there. I'm sure he'll get unloaded. And here I sit. I'm kind of in a, you know, I've, there's doors all here. And I've got to now be actively engaged in avoiding other trucks that may be trying to get in and out. Other than this door right here that I'm supposed to go into. So I'm making detention pay. It's not as much as driving pay, but... There's, there's only a few things that, that I think, well, there's probably a lot of things that drive truckers nuts. <laughs> there's only a few that bother me. And uh, I'm grateful that I get some money, but, uh, you know, I'm getting paid to be away from my family. And let's just say I get paid more when I'm driving than when I'm sitting. And right now, though, the power of me sitting is at all in the receiver's hands. So it's not my company's fault. But um, I can see why truck drivers get frustrated at shippers and receivers. There's things I want to say, but I'm not going to because <laughs> I try to be as professional as possible. But it, this makes it really difficult. Really difficult. So I've got uh, six hours and 24 minutes left on my clock, so we'll see what happens. I don't know if I'm going to get very many miles today. It is 3.05, and my pickup time is 4 o'clock. And uh, Attention, a new important message has arrived. More important stuff. I, Home. Uh, Messaging. You cannot check in this early. They have an automated system inside that trailer. I just type in a bunch of stuff. They give me a ticket. Then I go through that uh, scale house right there. Drive back and get my load in this massive facility. So I'm getting a couple skidded coils while I wait. I put in a uh, New location here, Springdale, R I Spring. You might be able to kind of see this Springdale, Ark Oop. Arkansas, Montana. Yeah, not going there. Did I write that down? C R A. Crap. It doesn't even show the right street. How funny is this? Been there a hundred million times. And sorry, I'm trying to find a place that'll. Because when I hold it in my left hand, I cover all the cameras because they're all on that side. Let me take a look at my messaging because I might have written down the address a little bit poorly. CRU. There it is. Let's see. Look on the map. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yep, that'd be it. Compare routes. Let's see what it gives. I've got this set to the shortest route versus the fastest route. So we'll see what it tells me. Kind of see where it's telling me to go. It's fast, but I mean, it's still slow. So it's suggesting this one, 627 miles, 
and it costs some tolls. But I mean, yeah. So this is the non-toll route. <laughs> it still has tolls because you can't get around it. And so, whoops. I'll go with that one, <coughs> and then I'll uh, proceed to the highlighted route. I'm not. See, it's got me going out this crazy way, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go boop right onto the road, and so I just wanted to look to see. Yeah, that's not going to work because I'll get off here and go down Klein Avenue and get onto 80, 94. So let me uh, add in a. Oh wait, let me. Uh, it likes to work from the front and back, so 80. To uh, 55. What kind of? What's it got going here? <laughs> it won't, see when it when it has you go the shortest route, it'll it'll have you go like city highways. So you have to watch out for this versus interstate, which you know is faster. So I don't think it's going to be much different. So let's change my preferences to. Uh, I, I'm only able to do this. Why? Because I have to wait a half an hour or another 21 minutes before I can check in. So it gives me time to play around with my... Let's see what it says now. Okay. Proceed to the highlighted route. And now, <laughs> so look at that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. So what we do is, the reason it wants me to turn onto these roads is because these, there's a bunch of the railroad tracks and the high, interstate highway, those are all bridges that you have to travel under. And they're all low clearance. They're like 12 foot 7 inches, but my truck is well below that, and so is my load. So um, if I had a, what do they call it, a condo style roof where it's really high roof line, I couldn't go under here. I came through here once and went under here and there was a truck stuck under the bridge because they had a condo style uh, truck. And apparently they missed all 500 signs that say, in flashing lights that say low clearance. I mean, I looked at the guy, I'm like, seriously, you tried it, huh? Wow. Because it is low, I mean, it looks low. And the first time I went under it, I was like, because I followed directions versus GPS, and I was like, hmm, this looks iffy. So I took it cautiously, and now that I've been here a few hundred times, now I know. So I go under here, uh, get on 90, and uh, so I won't be doing that crazy, you know, driving all those little roads to get around. So I'll get on 90. come down here wait what was I doing I was explaining something and now I need to actually go and take a look so see it switches me back up to the interstate pretty much the same route I would have taken um, and goes through st. Louis which is you know that's where I live kind of where that pin is uh, that's uh, it unfocused there for a second and maybe for a while but anyway, that, that pin is where the approximate location of my home is. Uh, spring, uh, that is not the way I'm going to go. That is not the way I'm going to go. Let me find it here, 37. Off of 44. That, this is it here. H. That is a via. So that's the first... You're going to see my whole mapping process and how this works. Because I've been to this location that I'm driving to from this location before and after you've been there. Proceed times. to the highlighted route. So this is how I make myself a lazy trucker because then I can just set this up and then follow my GPS based on the routing I set up for it. via I see I'm used to calling those waypoints I this whole via terminology I really don't like so now it's going to recalculate the entire trip and it's uh, taking a while taking a while let's just see if I can skip okay I don't proceed care. to the highlighted yeah. route summary view so it's a total of six this will be different once it's all calculated 
Come on. This is the speed of light. Phone falls out of your hands and, uh, you know, crap happens. So anyway, it's <laughs> even during that time that it fell, it's still having a heart, you know, it's calculating, calculating. Sometimes I have to actually turn this off, turn it back on so it can give me the full numbers. But, uh, yeah, 57, yeah. Zoom in here, boom, boom. It, it's having a hard time right here, that's for sure. So you can see, I'm gonna come out, uh, get on 90, come over to here, and then, anyway. You can kinda see the, the impression, the uh, route I'm gonna do to get to my Springfield destination. And, uh, whoops. So even see it just to go to that first uh, waypoint, it's saying it's 10 miles, but that's because it's got me going all over Timbuktu according to the GPS. So that's really about four or five. So and I would I really wanted to show the summary so I can see the total miles and hours that it estimates that it's going to take me to get there because it's taken so long. I'm going to unplug it. So it turns off and then turns back on. And see, now that it's getting close to the time I need to check in, all these trucks are pulling up. So now the uh, check-in area is gonna be packed with truckers and now um, it's gonna take me longer to check in. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, it's off. Right. And see, I, I appreciate this time that I have to do this because now my trip is going to be ready to go so all I have to do is once my load is secured and tarped go back out the gate get my paperwork and then do my Qualcomm messaging all right Omni tracks and then I can leave and I've only got you can see it here if it'll focus you know I love this camera for this particular reason It's still fuzzy, but it's three hours and 49 minutes. I don't know why it takes forever to focus. And no, I can't tap my screen to get it to focus. See, tap, 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 tap. No, it doesn't Proceed work. Proceed to the highlighted route. No, I'm not going to. I still have other stuff to do, like do my summary map view. Let's see how long this takes. See how, say I, I reset my GPS, turn it on, turn it back on, and bam. Now it calculates. So 632 miles, 11 hours and 28 minutes, and they gave me, they're gonna pay me uh, 617 miles. So that's how that works. And uh, I can drop this off tomorrow, or uh, either the second or the third. And this, it won't be a full 11 hours tomorrow, because hopefully I can get in and out of here like within an hour, which probably won't happen. And uh, I can hopefully drive for about an hour or two to knock that down to where I can deliver tomorrow. And the place I'm delivering is 24 hours, so yeah, that's the plan. If it doesn't work, I don't care. It's uh, it's okay. What I mean to say is it's okay. I do care. I care about most things. But what I'm saying is I don't worry about that. Um, oh, yeah. Anyway. It's cloudy. I understand it's supposed to snow here tomorrow, so I might get like an hour away from here and wake up and be snow on the ground. I don't know. Um, the interesting part about this particular facility is when you go in there, it's all computerized. So you you scan, you take out your uh, driver's license, put it in a little machine, it scans it. Uh, since I've been here before, it's already got my information, so I don't have to type it in. And uh, and basically, it prints out a ticket, so the loaders know when I show up what to load on my truck. I still have to prep my deck, but I'll do that once I get in and find out what exactly I'm getting. I believe I'm getting two coils, but that you can never count on that. You wait to see what you get. Because I've got to put down friction mats uh, for all skidded coils, and then I've got to uh, chain it according, or secure it according to its weight, and do trip chains on both sides. So, And then I've got to tarp it, because this is a Sorry, yeah, tarp load. So my camera's kind of all over the place, but we deal with that, don't we? Um, you can see everybody else is checking in. I still have to wait. I 
still have to wait. So, this is very close to uh, Chicago. This is Gary, Indiana. And uh, the uh, ride over here, I thought I was going to be. I'm talking kind of fast because I'm actually doing work now. I should slow down because uh, I sat at my receiver for five hours. And is that my company's fault? No. That's the receiver. You know, it's the way their operations work. They decided to have 30,000 deliveries today. And as a result, there were five or seven, ten trucks ahead of me when I got there. And I had to wait for each one to be unloaded. And they take their time. And uh, so I sat there for five hours. So what limits my mileage that I get through my company? The shippers and receivers, not my company. Um, other company, other people may feel differently. This is just my opinion. Um, but I do get three hours of detention pay. So it wasn't for a complete loss. Um, I've only done, I need to get fuel still. Hours of service, eight days. So I've done 183 miles so far today. This is going to be a really short mileage day because even with three miles, that three hours left on my clock. Let's say I get out of here in 45. Well, which isn't true because I got to wait, you know, another 10 minutes. So it's going to take them. So let's say two hours. There's 100 mi more miles I can get. So this is going to be a 283 mile day maximum. So in addition to that, they throw the detention pay on top of. So I mean, it does make it a little bit better for the short mileage day. And why are my mileage extra short today? Because I had to drive through Chicago. Anybody that drives through Chicago has to suffer with Chicago traffic. You know how, if you, if you look on your map and you notice how, was, is it Wisconsin, Minnesota? I don't know which one it is. Right above uh, Illinois. You come down Chicago around the lake and then back up to the rest of the, the east. Well, Chicago is like the armpit of the U.S. because in order to get anywhere north of Chicago or anywhere east of Chicago you have to drive around it. So it becomes the armpit of America and everybody's got to drive through it and it slows everything down. And that's why Chicago is rated number one worst city to drive through for truckers. And uh, fortunately for me I live close so I get a lot of deliveries and pickups here. Anyway, that's enough of my uh, diatribe on uh, what I don't want to talk about. Um, that's it. This I apologize that this video is so long, that there's so many segments. Um, anyway, uh, this will probably be it for today because the next time I film, the sun is going to set here in about an hour or two or less. And uh, it's too dark to really take a look at what's going on in my trailer so till tomorrow two hours and 30 minutes left I've been sitting in this warehouse spot for 45 minutes <laughs> waiting to get my coils I have to travel up this uh, bay for I don't know another three or four truck lengths so I decided to make a sandwich because uh, I carry that stuff in my truck and I've got my deck prepared. I just got to wait for them to slap some coils on the back so I can secure it and get out of here. <laughs>